This is the Trapezoids and Kites tutorial. Let's begin by discussing the two types of trapezoids. A regular trapezoid, which is a quadrilateral that has one pair of parallel sides. Those parallel sides are referred to as the bases, while the other sides are the legs. So this side and this side are the bases, and this side and this side would be the legs. And we also have an isosceles trapezoid, which is a trapezoid with congruent legs, congruent diagonals, and that has at least one pair of congruent base angles. So the congruent base angles could be the red base angles here that are indicated, or you could say that these two angles were congruent, indicated in blue. Either one would make them isosceles trapezoids. Notice how for the congruent diagonal, I just drew a diagonal right where the two diagonals cross. I drew, excuse me, a red tick mark there. That's important to note because we'll use that in the future when we're indicating two congruent diagonals. Now that you've seen regular trapezoids and isosceles trapezoids, let's see if you can tell the difference between them. Are the following quadrilaterals trapezoids, isosceles trapezoids, or neither? Take a look at A. With A, we can see that both the legs are congruent to each other, and there's a congruent pair of base angles, and the diagonals are congruent. So, which type of trapezoid would it be, or would it not be either one? Well, in this case, it's going to be neither. And it's neither because we haven't been told that the bases are parallel to each other. So, for what we know, it's not a trapezoid at all. Now let's take a look at B. In B we can see that the two bases are parallel to each other. We don't know anything more about it. So knowing just that, that would tell us this quadrilateral is a trapezoid. And lastly, let's look at C. In C we can tell that the bases are parallel to each other, the legs are congruent, the diagonals are congruent, and there is a congruent pair of base angles. So, this would be an isosceles trapezoid. Now hopefully you have the distinction between these two trapezoids. Let's move on to the trapezoid mid-segment theorem. The trapezoid mid-segment theorem states that the length of the mid-segment of a trapezoid is exactly one-half the sum of the two bases of the trapezoid, and it is parallel to those bases. So essentially, this mid-segment right here in the middle is going to be equal to one-half the sum of the top base and the bottom base added together. So if I told you that the top had a length of 4 centimeters and the bottom had a length of 14 centimeters, how long would the mid-segment be? Well, you would know that you would just add those two bases together, 4 centimeters plus 14 centimeters, and divide that by 2. 4 plus 14 is 18, and 18 over 2 is 9. So our mid-segment would have a length of 9 centimeters. Now, what if I told you that our mid-segment had a length of 12 centimeters? and the bottom base had a length of 21 centimeters. How could you solve for the top base? Well, you just plug those in to our equation. You know that b1 plus b2 over 2 is equal to the length of the mid-segment. So in this case, the length of the mid-segment is 12. And b1 is missing the top base, but b2 is 21. And that's all divided by 2, so that's just our formula but we've now filled in the data. So what we want to do is multiply both sides by 2, and that'll cancel the 2 off the left. And we'll have b1 plus 21 is equal to 12 times 2, which is 24. So we can now subtract 21 from both sides of the equation. The 21's will cancel on the left, and we'll have b1 is equal to 24 minus 21, which is 3. So the top of this trapezoid would have a length of 3 centimeters. Now that's all the work that we're going to do with trapezoids. Let's move on to kites. A kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of sides that are both consecutive 
and congruent. So, take a look at these two sides on top and bottom. They're consecutive, meaning they're touching each other, they're adjacent to each other, and they're congruent to each other. So that's one pair, and you can see that on the bottom pair of sides as well, that they're touching each other and they're congruent to each other. So a couple things that you should know about kites is that first, their diagonals intersect each other perpendicularly. And also, opposite angles of a kite are congruent to each other. And you can see that with the red angles and the blue angles. The red angles are congruent to each other, and the blue interior angles are congruent to each other. It's important to note that as a condition for kites, one of those pairs has to be congruent to each other. If one of those pairs of opposite interior angles is congruent to each other, then both are and it's a kite. So knowing what you know about kites now, let's take a look at a practice problem. I'd like you to fill in the missing pieces of this kite, so the missing angles or sides that are indicated by a question mark. I'll give you a moment to pause this tutorial video and try to fill those in on your own. Then go ahead and restart the video and I'll go over them with you. Okay, let's review this. I'm going to start with this question mark down on the lower left hand side, right there. Now recall that if this is a kite, then consecutive sides are congruent. So this side is going to be congruent to this side. You can tell that they're going to be, these two are going to be the pair that's consecutive and congruent because they're both kind of the shorter sides of the kite, which means that this is going to be seven. Now also, this consecutive pair of sides are going to be congruent. So let's go ahead and solve for that top question mark now. We've got a right triangle formed here because the diagonals of a kite intersect each other perpendicularly as indicated with that red right angle right here. So if you recall from our tutorial on Pythagorean triples and right angles, this right here is actually a Pythagorean triple. 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to c squared, in this case 13. If you check this out, 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared, it'll all check out mathematically and the left side of this equation will be equal to the right side because it's a Pythagorean triple. If you have trouble with that, review our tutorial video on right triangles in the Pythagorean theorem. So lastly, we're missing this question mark here. Now you know that with a kite, opposite angles are going to be congruent to each other. So if this top angle is 136 degrees, this bottom angle must also be 136 degrees. And that's how you can use your knowledge of kites to solve for missing pieces of kites.